All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing uh, something different this week. Let's do a live review uh, with you guys for uh, the last episode of Fear the Walking Dead. So this is for uh, Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, uh, Episode 4, The Key. Okay, so I just finished uh, watching this one. Looks like it's just wrapping up now. Uh, so we should have some people joining us. Can you just let me know if you guys can hear me okay? How you doing, Dan? We've got Harry, Dan, Addie, Raymond, John, uh, Maiden. How's it going, Maiden? And uh, got how you guys doing? And Brayden. Um, so, yeah, I just got finished watching uh, Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, uh, Episode 4, The Key. And, um, you know, been doing the reviews every week for Fear, well, you know, for the last six years. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Harry, for that. And decided, why don't we just do the review together uh, live? So I won't have the pictures here for you guys. So that's one downside. But we'll try and do this, uh, give our thoughts on this one uh, together and see how it goes. But the weather here is bad. So uh, if the stream drops or something, if it knocks us out because of the connection going down, then, you know, we may have to do it again. So did you guys get to see uh, this episode uh, of Fear the Walking Dead? Hey, David, how you doing? Hi, Dory. Uh, Dr. Death. We got Addie. We got uh, Al uh, or Adj YT Abbott. And we got uh, LM. Uh, yeah, I'm doing well, LM. Thanks for joining. Uh, a little bit under the weather now. Uh, we're starting to get a lot colder. So I got a little bit of a, uh, not a head cold, but you know, the weather changes. You just don't feel as good as usual. The sun's going down here by like six o'clock. So PM. So um not getting a whole lot of sunlight, that whole stuff. But uh, this episode, amazing. Uh, John Patrick just said here, Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, killing it. Absolutely agree. So this was another fantastic episode, which makes it four straight awesome episodes. Um, I'm still going to go with episode three as being my top episode for the season so far because of how many years we had to wait to see Dwight be reunited with Sherry. But that said, this episode... Um, was certainly fantastic as well. Uh, you know, I could see if some people like it better than episode three or the earlier episodes, because uh, I think that John is an awesome character. I think that he's one of the best they've added on in the last few years for fear. And, um, you know, I feel like he's just, uh, he's way, he's way too good of a guy. He's way too good to be in that world. You know, like he's too good of a guy to be in <laughs> the zombie apocalypse. I guess I would have to say if it wasn't for his ability to uh, trick shoot and to be so accurate uh, with shooting and have that skill, I don't think there's any way he would be alive uh, at this point because he is, he's way too good for uh, morally for all the things that uh, happen in the zombie apocalypse and just um, the way everyone behaves. So in this episode, the key, we get to see John and uh, focus episode on John. We get, spoiler warning, a little bit of June at the end. We get a lot of Virginia and we get some uh, new characters here. I think Janice and Cameron. So basically we see the episode go in and um, we have uh, Cameron. So, so basically we get the sense that John is a kind of a, a sheriff or a police officer in the zombie apocalypse in Lawton. So he's He's a police officer. He's keeping the peace for Virginia. And um, what he discovers in this episode is that uh, the group uh, has sort of a bit of a rotten core, or at least it's rotten at the top, it sounds like, in that you can join the pioneers, but you are not allowed to leave. And if you attempt to leave or if you attempt to, to run away from Virginia's group, uh, she will kill you. And um, she is uh, she's a bit savage in how she does that. Uh, she also has a propaganda side of it as, as well, too, which I like, too, in that, you know, at the end of the episode, she is presenting to everybody a narrative that does not at all fit what has actually happened uh, and transpired in, in this uh, episode, which is that John has discovered that because Cameron and Janice wanted to run, they wanted to leave the community, um, Cameron was killed and then uh, uh, Janice was framed for the uh, the kill and then she ended up being being killed as as well, too. Now, John is investigating this through as he's going through the episode. So it's been 247 days uh, that he's been kind of a sheriff in Lawton, uh, where Virginia also uh, lives as well. And so you have uh, Cameron's body is found. And so he wants to do an investigation when Cameron's body is found. It's found near some barbed wire. 
and um, and so you have it there, and he's being eaten by zombies, and so uh, John wants to investigate to find out what happened here. Was it a suicide? Was it an accident? Did he just somehow, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, was he drunk and passed out, and then and then was eaten by zombies or whatever? So he wants to investigate, and what he finds right away is that Virginia kind of comes in and puts the kibosh on it for him to investigate to find out what happened. So he doesn't really listen to her and he wants to investigate anyway. And he finds it maybe a bit suspicious that she doesn't want him to do so. She doesn't want him to investigate. Um, so which you can kind of figure out why that would be is because she's the one who did it, right? She, she, she ordered him to be killed. Uh, so John investigates a little further. He finds that there is a, a piece of a knife and that, uh, that the victim, uh, Cameron, was actually um, uh, 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 cutthroated or he was... Um, he was, uh, they, they slit his throat basically. And, and when he was defending himself, a piece of the knife broke off. So John exhumes his body by hand with a shovel, takes him out uh, after he's buried, finds the piece of the knife that was used to kill him and um, starts to discover you have some, some zombies that just happened to, to fall, a couple of them that happened to fall into uh, Cameron's grave as he's exhuming the body and finding the, uh, the piece. So John almost gets killed himself is able to kill off the zombies that are kind of coming at him and discovers that, yeah, he was cutthroated. And then you have Janice, who uh, is kind of caught in the mix of this and that she was with Cameron, she was going to leave too. And so uh, she does a false confession uh, to say that she did it, even though she didn't, uh, based on Virginia's uh, forcing her to, uh, maybe to see it as, you know, not wanting John to get himself killed by uh, by being kind of going into into the uh, getting in the mix with this. So as he's discovering things through, he's communicating a bit with Strand in that he's uh, trying to find out what happens or what what happened to her. And he you know, he's innocent of mind. Strand is not so innocent of mind. So I think Strand gets the gets the just right away that Virginia likely did this. So uh, it's it's a conspiracy, basically. So <laughs> so um, so for John to investigate further, Strand's like trying to tell him don't do it or whatever. He finds out who took out the knife, this whole thing from their uh, armory there. And as the episode runs through, we find in the end that basically um, the rabbi, so everybody sells John out, it seems, to Virginia. Strand sells him out somewhat. The rabbi uh, uh, sells him out to Virginia as well. The rabbi comes to visit him to find out what, uh, you know, what, how he's feeling or whatever before Janice is executed, even though Janice didn't do anything. Uh, it was Virginia who did it. Um, so they basically, uh, instead of waiting till the morning when she's executed, uh, Virginia does it ahead of time and the rabbi sells out John and what's happening and what was in Soda Strand, um, and what he was going to do, which is he was going to try to spring Janice and kind of get her out of there so that she could live, uh, instead of being put to death for something that she didn't do just because they wanted to leave. So, um, so, you know, you see the episode go through. She is killed. John goes out and uh, puts her down and kills the walkers that are kind of eating her, this kind of stuff, or eating others around. And then um, kind of comes back in and uh, is kind of walking in. in a scene that kind of feels like at a time he's going to go in and just clean house and start trick shooting everybody down and killing everybody and maybe kill Virginia. And it seems that Strand and uh, the rabbi sort of stop him on his way in to do so. Um, so, and, and to kind of keep everything together and, and to not, uh, and to not have John be killed, uh, himself to get himself killed by the end of the episode. So, uh, then to wrap things up near the end here, we have, um, kind of Virginia who makes her propagandist propaganda speech to the people, uh, to keep them in line. Uh, and then, uh, you have John looking like he's the hero throughout the episode. He has a cavity as well, which I also like too, because uh, he's, you know, he's eating the, uh, if you guys remember, he's eating like the candy before he'd eat the toffee last season in the last few years. Uh, so it's like, yeah, you keep eating candy and eventually you get, you get a cavity and dentistry is not that easy in the zombie apocalypse. So, um, so later he pulls the tooth out with, uh, with like a, a grip, a vice grip or whatever, or what is that called? Like not pliers, but a, but a grip and pulls it, uh, pulls out the tooth himself June, uh, because he's gone through all of this, uh, Virginia kind of gives him uh, a little bit of a reward for it and has June come and stay with him. So now June is with him in Lawton. And then we have uh, Morgan, who runs into some trouble with those guys who are writing the end is the beginning or whatever it was. Uh, they ram his car and then he gets into it with two of them as he has the key. And then he kills them uh, uh, both to wrap up the uh, the episode. And that's it for this uh, for this episode. Um 
So in terms of a score, I'm going to give it a 9.2 out of 10. I thought it was fantastic. Um, a really great, another really great episode for Fear of the Walking Dead. Uh, awesome episode for John. Uh, taking Strand and making him more of a villain than he was before. And he's always been kind of, Strand's always been kind of in the middle. But it's, uh, it's interesting to see how he uh, behaves with regards to Virginia and how he uh, has so easily started to toe the line for her and even taken her side over, over John's side from before. And I don't know how close Strand would have been with John, but he was with the group beforehand. So it kind of feels like Strand and John should be, uh, or Strand should be more loyal to John from before and Morgan than he is to Virginia. But I don't get that sense anymore. I get the sense that he's kind of assimilated into the pioneers, and um, he's uh, he's become he's become more of like a villain uh, from the way I, I kind of see things, or at least the things he's had to do in order to survive himself is he's had to uh, hurt others, uh, people that were you know even possibly on his own team, were on his team before, like this one with John. Or the other one where he stabs the uh, the other guy in the leg and feeds him to the dead. That whole thing. Uh, uh, so uh, Sanjay, so so you have you have Strand kind of becoming more of a villain. The rabbi was kind of always well, maybe not always sort of like that, but a, l- a little bit, you know. Uh, for me, even when he first kind of came in and stuff, we got the question that he maybe had done some shady stuff to survive, similar to like a Gabriel character from the original Walking Dead. Just in this case, him being a rabbi for fear, kind of their version of that. Um, but I love the episode. John is one of my absolute favorite characters who's still alive, I think, in Walking Dead right now after all these years. And um, so he's great. Um, you know, we don't have Rick anymore. And I always see a lot of similarities between John and between Rick. You know, you have uh, Rick was a cop and Alexandria, he was a police officer. And then before in his regular life, he was a, a sheriff uh, with Shane and everything. And so John has a lot of similarities to him. But I look at John as more innocent than Rick ever really was and more sort of by the book, kind of a simple, good hearted, nice guy who just has uh, incredible uh, ability in the zombie apocalypse to basically end anybody within range, um, you know, uh, v- quicker than they can get him. Right. So he's a force to be reckoned with in terms of uh, in terms of um, uh, which is cool to go with kind of the Texas uh, sort of Western type of feel. You know, if there's a shootout, you want John on your side because he's going to be able to kill 10 guys at once. And, you know, like legit because he won't miss and most people are, are going to have shit aim. So he's going to shoot them all down first before they can get him. So it's, it's pretty cool. So I like John. I think he's awesome. I, I love this episode. And um, I hate Virginia. And uh, Dakota gets, a, gets a, a scene in here, too. She gets to say something to John. But I, I hate Virginia. I hate her even more now than I ever did before. And, uh, you know, maybe my only problem is that. You know, it's it's a it's a Praetorian type of uh, of situation with her. She has the Rangers around her. She has people that protect her, but she herself is not mighty at all. So, in terms of might is right, you know, uh, Strand and the Rabbi are going with uh, Virginia based on might is right. They're saying that well, she's going to win. She's the queen or she's the king, what have you. So, I'm going to take her side based on might is right because I just think she's going to win and, and do that, which is. Um, which is funny because it it just makes it it, it it's 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 hmm, how do I say this? It's it's a trick, right? She's not mighty. You know, one on one with her and John, she's not mighty. John will kill her. John will take her out like that. She'll be done. That'll be it. It'll be one shot in a tenth of a second and she'll she'll be done. But they praetorian her, they protect her, they kings guard her, um, because of a perceived might, because of a perceived uh, uh, mightiness, maybe that's not a word, but a perceived, a perception of might that she has uh, over the uh, the others. So they take her side instead of John's, even though they should be able to realize that if they do a coup, I get the sense in this episode that if they did a coup, they would be able to, with John in there, 90% chance Virginia would be dead. They would be able to coup her, but they don't because of a perceived uh, 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 might is right ability that she somehow has here, maybe based on the other Rangers and on the amount of people that are in the groups, uh, Strand takes her side when if Strand would have flipped, they could have, uh, John, especially involved, could have killed Virginia at almost any time during this, uh, during this sequence. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys for the super chats. Looks like we have a couple here that we'll get to. So Maiden sent through the first one. And thank you, Maiden, for your continued support. Uh, and Maiden says, Trav, you look like you're dressed to start a Cantifa. Oh, right. Yeah, because I'm wearing all black. Yeah, sorry. That's, uh, that's my bad. Um, let me see. My hair is messy, though, right? <laughs> so I'll take it off. Yeah, I know. I, I do. I like to wear black clothing, which is not it has nothing to do with that deal. I'm not into that. But I just always have, even from when I was younger. So, but sometimes if I go to the store and I wear wear this, you know, type of thing, people do kind of look at me sideways. And <laughs> I think like like, like whatever, uh, which is kind of funny because I don't look like a bad guy. But I guess you put the gear on and a mask on, and, and they have no, uh, they just see this guy with a with a mask on and, and all black. It's like scary for them, right? Uh, so, and I weigh almost two hundred pounds, so it's you know it's uh, a bit scary, right? Uh, but thank you, Maiden. Um, Crimson19 said, did Morgan say he was heading back to Georgia? Yeah, he said he was going somewhere. I didn't write down where he said he was going. Um, but I thought, I like that he's got Rufus. I think that's cute because I like I like Rufus, the, uh, the bloodhound. Very cool uh, that he took from the bounty hunter, which is really good. So I like that a lot. And um, I like that, uh, that he kind of hides when things are going bad. But he does, he is going somewhere. Is he going to find... Grace. I'm not sure exactly. Um, I guess I'll have to look at that back. If anybody has a clear indication of that, then uh, yeah, Kev, no, it's not. Uh, you know, I, I am not. I'm not a member. No, I'm. Uh, I'm a. De I'm a defector. I'm someone who goes against them. So they. They don't like me. Um, so, but uh, yeah, he. I think he was. Is he going to find Grace or where is he going? I'm not sure exactly. But he does ask the question of what the key is for that he has, and they wanted it so bad. Now we know that the key is for that uh, ship. Uh, is it a submarine or whatever it is? The ship that is locked up and probably has like years of supply would be the best place ever to, I mean, you want to talk about an awesome place where you could have a, a group B. Um, I would think that would be a great place to secure. Nobody could break in. They couldn't, they couldn't get at you. And um, that would be an awesome place for them to just go through and raid because it probably has years of store of food and stuff like that. That's still probably good, or at least, you know, weapons and, and whatever else with ammunition, I would think still in there. So at some point in time, I do expect uh, Morgan to gain access to that ship and take it to Virginia. But I was kind of disappointed in this episode that Strand uh, went with Virginia and that Strand uh, Praetorian, that's not a word either, was a Praetorian for, uh, for Virginia in that that was unnecessary. He didn't have to do that. He could have done a coup with John and they would have taken her down. Maybe you have to kill some of her rangers with her as well too, but then you do like an election after or something like that uh, to make it better and you reveal why you had to do it, which is that she was doing this stuff and not letting him leave and killing people and all that. You can make a case for it. You just have to handle the propaganda side of it. Um, by the way, just so you guys don't know, that's how our world works too for people who don't know that. You have what actually happens and then you have the propaganda of it, right? So in this episode, a good example is Virginia is the one who basically kills the two and does all this stuff. But the propaganda, which is the presentation of it, she blames it on um, on Janice, saying that Janice did to Cameron, and so they were sentenced to death, and John's here and all this stuff. Our world in the real life, that works the same way, okay? And, and I've been trying to explain that to people this year, and, and i kind of been failing at it. But our world in real life is the same thing. We have all these things that happen behind the scenes. Could be wars in Iraq and stuff like that. Now, the reason they give could be, well, he has weapons of mass destruction or whatever, so we got to attack him, like Saddam with Iraq, which was like the last major war. Is that the last biggest major war we've had? Yeah. So it was started under false pretenses. The real reasons for why they did that were back here. Then the propaganda angle, which uh, Mr. Skull and Bones Bush went into, was, well, he's got weapons of mass destruction. we got to attack him. This episode is a good example of, the difference between what's actually happening and what, what they're actually doing, and then the profane public, which gets a presentation angle of that. So this is a good episode to look at to express that game theory understanding of that, because our real world works like that too. They do whatever they're going to do, and then they give whoever the parties are, and then they give uh, a, a presentation propagandist reason for it uh, to the profane, to the public. Okay, so so let's uh, let's look at it that way. This is a good this is a good uh, uh, example of that. Uh, that goes said. Trev, did Fear change its writers? It's good again, like season three. Yeah, man. Uh, and thank you for the super chat, that goes and for your support. 
I couldn't agree with you more, man. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, this episode right here was fantastic. And, um, you know, I hope they continue doing what they're doing. I think they're doing an amazing job. They do have two showrunners. So maybe they finally found their stride and they've kind of found a good way to do this. And I think Gimple was involved with the season too. Uh, so if they continue like this, and I did see also, if you guys don't know, if you have Amazon Prime Video, they have every season of Fear of the Walking Dead up until season six, because that's airing now. But um, so I think Fear could continue for a while longer. If they're, if they're selling it to Amazon for licensing fees to show on Amazon Prime Video, um, maybe Fear could continue in perpetuity. Like maybe it could just keep going because if they get a good kickback from selling it to Amazon for a good amount, then uh, likely, in my mind anyway, at least, it's probably going to work for years more to come. So uh, let's hope fear continues for at least a few more years, especially if they can continue it like this. Because honestly, if, if they do fear this way, when The Walking Dead ends, I will still watch fear um, after The Walking Dead is over if they continue to do episodes this good. I'll still watch it. I'll still review it with you guys. I'll still take time to do it. Because if it's this good, then... Um, you know, uh, I, I think why not? But uh, yeah, I agree. That goes nothing changed so far as I know. Maybe just that they put more effort into the season. They really want to make it good. And they did a maybe it just maybe their writing style or the way that they work uh, somehow clicks better with what they're doing this year than what they did the last year or two. Um, but their first half of seasons are usually good. But this is the best start I think we've seen since a season um three i think this is the next so far anyway is off to a great start um so and then he said also did you watch joe rogan with alex jones on october 27th the information was like a machine gun from alex lol but worth watching yes i saw the entire thing through of alex jones on joe rogan i watched through all the three hours and i have been heavily researching this week the history uh behind alex jones the history behind uh, Infowars, and uh, maybe I'll save that for a different stream or a different video. Maybe that ghost, we can take that and I'll do another stream right after that. Give my thoughts on that to separate it up from this one. Like in five minutes, we can just, uh, I'll, I'll redo a stream, you guys rejoin, and we'll get into that more. But you did send through a super chat for that, so we'll definitely do that um, soon here. I loved it, and um, I've got some stuff prepped for it. Um, basically, uh, it was a great episode. Uh, so I did some digging, and it looks like Infowars, uh, which is Alex Jones' main show, uh, Band.Video has it, and BitChute uploads a lot of his stuff to it, is actually um, uh, owned by Time Warner. Um, so, so we'll have to go into that in a different video. Uh, I am a huge fan of Alex Jones. I think that he's amazing. I think he's fantastic. But we'll have to do a different video going into that because he... Not, not may he be, at least it sounds to me like InfoWars was started as controlled opposition. Uh, and people have told me that for a long time. And I'm like, why would they ban themselves? Why would he be banned if he was controlled opposition? But uh, I'll show you guys the evidence that, uh, that it's at least connected to Time Warner. Uh, example is people have taken clips from InfoWars from Alex Jones' show and posted them on YouTube. And they've been copyright striked, and the owning party is uh, Warner Music, which is Time Warner. So, so, huh, so this is tricky. And I got the protocols uh, set up here about setting up their own controlled opposition. He's the best conspiracy guy in the world, Alex Jones. He's got the most views of anyone in the world. He's had an impact on the presidency, uh, supporting Donald Trump before he got in the first time in 2016. And so uh, I'm a huge fan of Alex Jones. I've also gone into the Bill Hicks uh, angle for him, too, if anyone's ever researched that. So some very cool stuff. I think we'll go into with that ghost. And I want to get my thoughts on the things that Alex Jones had presented in the Joe Rogan Experience episode. There were a couple of jokes, one Bill Hicks jokes from Joe Rogan to, to Alex Jones. Um, so that's cool. And then we did get a couple of CIA jokes about uh, age, or Joe's, uh, Joe Rogan's uh, new CIA name. So we'll go into that. Because um, there are a lot of clips where Alex Jones has said that his whole family are Freemasons. I can play it for you. It's on YouTube. So I can play it in a video. I can grab it, put it in a video where he says his whole family is Freemasons. Another one where he says his whole family is CIA. Other one where he says his family is intelligence agency, this kind of thing. So um, very interesting. I mean, you want to talk about an interesting guy. Alex Jones is, I also think he's very funny too. I think he's one of the funniest guys in the world. I think he's well 
steps funnier than Joe Rogan uh, in my mind. I think Joe Rogan is an awesome uh, interviewer and host, but I think Alex Jones is a lot funnier than Joe Rogan is uh, just in his ranting and the things he does and, and all that stuff. So we'll go into that a bit. I'm a huge fan of him. I liked a lot of the stuff that he, that he presented on um, the Joe Rogan experience and um, he does a fantastic, he does a fantastic job. So maybe we'll do a separate stream right after this and I'll give you guys my thoughts on Alex Jones controlled opposition and uh, what that's what that's all about. That's a mind bender, you know, because you got to ask them, why would why would they set up uh, an info wars to present the angle against themselves? And so we got to go into that. It's a mind bender. But I got the protocols uh, set up here to present for you guys. And what we want to do is we want to get down to the truth mostly. But he's a Trump guy, basically, uh, is what Alex Jones is. So the Trump administration, Alex Jones are like are like that. So um, also Biden's winning in all the polls right now. So a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Lots of stuff coming. Could be good stuff. But let's try to keep it to um, let's keep it to uh, fear for this one. We'll close it. We'll start again in five or 10 minutes. We'll do another live stream and we'll get into all of the stuff in that. Because I also think Alex Jones may have been through possibly some uh, MK Ultra style uh, programming as well, too. Um, I feel really sorry for him. I like him a lot. And I just, uh, especially at the end of it, he kind of admits that he, he, uh, he, chew, he grill, he, he, he uh, grinds his teeth. So his teeth are kind of grinded down and stuff like that. And he gets dental problems. He breaks his teeth, stuff like that, because uh, he's just so in, intense about it. So uh, you almost, it always brings in the question, was he sort of, uh, was he in a program to set him up to be the antithesis to them? And basically at the same time still has CIA handlers and has people that he answers to. Uh, that is likely that is likely the case. Well, you can't, Harry, uh, because you, no one can dethrone him. He, he might retire, but no one could dethrone him in that he's not he's not independent, right? Like you 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 get the sense that he is. It looks like he is, but if you look at it, and I'll show you guys some of the videos and stuff that uh, will show it. That Infowars has ties to Time Warner, which means that it's like a TV show you're watching. So we'll, we'll get into that more after. Um, right, exactly. And it could also be a honeypot so that other people kind of trust him and give them their information and then he can give it. If someone's really crazy, like a Bill Cooper or somebody, he could give it to uh, internal CIA agency people and then they can go and get the guy. Uh, Bill Cooper's dead, right? He's been dead a long time. A shootout, right? Then you get a shootout with cops or whatever. That's what they said. So think of that in terms of this episode, right? They kill him. They do a thing. They say, well, he was blah, blah, this happened, whatever. But really, they, the real answer there is that he was going against the pyramid and he was actually going to do something about it. He was trying to put together militia, stuff like that. So he had to be stopped, which has a lot of parallels to this episode. That guy's name is Bill Cooper. OK, William Cooper. He did a book, Behold a Pale Horse. And so, you know, um, We'll get into it because I, I, I want to present it right. And uh, so I think we'll do that after. Um, okay. Um, somebody's got music uh, pulling in. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, thank you, Neil, the one. I appreciate that. Any other comments about this episode of Fear the Walking Dead before we cut it and then start a stream and focus on Alex Jones and controlled opposition? Uh, anybody have any um yeah, a sub with a nuke says in the future. Yeah, that could be cool. Imagine if it did have a nuke, right? That'd be sweet. Um, okay, so you can tell Gimbal got his hands on World Beyond. Oh, yeah, says John Patrick. Well, I think actually he's involved with this season of Fear, as a matter of fact. So, uh, you know, you can't deny it, man. Gimbal's got skills. Like, I know he's a villain. I know he's a villain character, but we can't deny it, man. He's got some serious skills. Um, so, yeah, and then uh, uh, Future Not Fix said Gimpy or, Gu or, or Guinea does make a good villain. Uh, writers make you hate her. Well, that's true. She is a good villain as far as that goes. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, uh, let's uh, let's close this video, guys, because this was the video for, um, for Fear of the Walking Dead and the review for that. And then let's start a stream real soon where we can focus on and talk about Alex Jones, his uh, episode with Joe Rogan, Controlled Opposition, and we can go into all that stuff. So, um, okay. Yeah, Fear is definitely back on track. Mike uh, is doing great. And Billy Jean said, uh, what do you think of them making Talking Dead only available on AMC Plus? 
Uh, Billy, is did they announce they're doing that? Uh, I guess we better wait till I hear that from you. Did they say they're only doing Talking Dead on AMC Plus? Is that true? Um, that uh, that makes sense if uh, if they would do that. Did they announce they're doing that, or do you mean like you're asking me to hear my thoughts on it? Um, so do a review of the Joker movie, Rebecca. Yeah, I want to. I did watch it. I actually didn't like the Joker movie that much. Uh, I just thought it was really dark and depressing, but maybe I got to watch it again and uh, and then maybe do a review of it after. I wanted to do a review of the, uh, the Borat movie, but I didn't get around to it. So um, yeah, Billy, did you confirm for him, Billy Jean, uh, what do you think of making Talking Dead available only on AMC Plus? Oh, you're asking to hear my thoughts. So they didn't announce that. Yeah, they should probably do that. I don't know why they're not doing Talking Dead. Maybe it's not worth it for them. How much does it cost to do a Talking Dead? Like, what would be the budgetary cost for that, you know, to do it? I don't understand why you wouldn't just keep doing Talking Dead because you could do it from distance and people would probably want to watch it. Um, maybe they did the cost analysis and they thought, like, maybe people are not watching it at all. I don't, I don't know. But um, I would think you would always do Talking Dead, even if you have to do it from a distance rather than just showing a movie or showing a replay or something. But maybe, who knows? Maybe if they play a movie, it gets more views than Talking Dead does. Maybe people just aren't that into Talking Dead anymore. Maybe that's why. Um, yeah, Zach says, John Dory is going to be our new Rick Grimes. Well, he is really great. I got to, uh, I got to uh, admit it. Okay, guys, let's cut because I'm really excited to do this Alex Jones live stream with you guys. Um, let's do it, man. Uh, we'll cut this one here. I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Fear. And I'll see you guys back again soon in the channel. Go back to the channel in about 10 or 15 minutes, and we'll be in another stream for uh, for the Alex Jones, Joe Rogan stuff so we can split it for the engine. Um, Marilyn said, Talking Dead returns on November 22nd. Oh, okay. So that's not too far off, Marilyn. So it sounds like maybe they're doing it for the finale episode. Is that what that is? Because uh, that'll be this weekend was four, five, six, seven. Oh, maybe they're not showing the eighth episode. Maybe they just have seven episodes for the season. Well, if that's the case, they've got a few more left. Okay, cutting the Walking Dead stream, switching to real life, um, you know, talking about the pyramid, Alex Jones, uh, our overlords, talking about the reality of how the world functions, not the Virginia presentation part that she tells the public. For the profane, for the public, if you want that narrative, don't join the next video. If you want the soft, feel-good narrative of how the world works, listen to Virginia, Listen to your you know, politicians. Don't think about it. Just do that. If you want to get into the real stuff, we'll do that right after this video. Okay, I'll see you guys in about 10 or 15 minutes. It's Travis saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.